WIFO-FM Jessup, Big Dog Country Radio, 105.5 FM. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show here on WIFO. And it's brought to you by O'Quinnan Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank. Are you looking for an insurance company that you can call and talk to a live person? Are you looking for an insurance company where you can walk in and talk to an agent? Are you looking for an insurance company that offers multiple companies so they can try and get you the best rate? If you said yes to any of these, then you need to call or come by Oakwin and Associates Insurance Financial Services. We offer multiple companies so we can find the best fit for you. Give us a call at 385-1000 or stop by our office at 212 South Fair Street right here in Jessup. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. When it comes to barbecue, Vans Barbecue and Jessup is the place to be. A small family-owned business located at 1876 on the Savannah Highway. Vans Barbecue has lunch and dinner specials. Stop by or call to make an order. The number to call, 427-3358. Vans Barbecue's new manager is Sarah Van. Vans Barbecue offers potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, and don't forget their delicious mac and cheese. Also, check out their shrimp plates, the best in town. Yes, when it comes to the barbecue, head to Vans Barbecue, locally owned and operated. Stop by and tell them the big dog sent you. Once again, the number to order, 427-3358. Hi, I'm Raymond Brown. And I'm Mandy Yeomans. At First Southern Bank, our customers are like family. As a locally owned community bank, we're dedicated to helping our clients succeed. We have loans for every need, whether it's personal or business. We have lines of credit, auto loans, equipment loans, and of course, we offer mortgages. Stop by our bank or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. World famous. The world famous Butch and Bob Show. World famous Butch and Bob Show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM Big Dog Country Radio. Bob, how's it going? Going well. Going well? Going well. Just hot. Yeah. Hot outside, but. Other than that's good. Yeah, it's going to be a scorching week all week long, so folks just need to be careful when they're doing those outdoor activities. You know, sometimes you can just be bebop along there doing stuff outside. Next thing you know, you find yourself passed out on the ground or in the back of an ambulance because you just, you know, it just sneaks up on you. I've been watching SEC Media Days from Nashville, Tennessee on the SEC Network. Kirby addresses the Media Day at 1130, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes because all they want to talk about is all the – Speeding incidents at UGA and the culture and all that good stuff. So, be curious to see how it all plays out. Um, He's saying, "Well, I just got fast players." Paul Feinbaum had Tony <laughs> Barnhart on his program yesterday afternoon. You know, he's a longtime journalist with AJC, but he's also with the big Georgia alumni guys. So he said he was kind of torn. He said, "It's just a mess." <laughs> That's what he said. He said he really doesn't know what. Going on. Apparently, uh, the University of Georgia is demanding a retraction from a story that the AJC did. And they want, uh, and supposedly it's going to court. So Tony Barnhart says they probably won't get a retraction. So but it'll be interesting to see how the question goes today at 1130 with Kirby at an SEC media day. But last night they had a show called Them Dogs. They did the preview of, or the mm-hmm. recap of the season where Georgia won the national championship showed all the highlights so I was thinking about that Ohio State game how we got so lucky that he missed that field goal at the end of the game because <laughs> things would be so different you know, yep. that was a heck of a ball game I remember being there like I said just hoping and praying he missed that field goal and fortunately he did so that was a heck of a ball game yeah but I'm glad it went our way but should be interesting today. It was fun listening to Jimbo Fisher yesterday. Like I said, he's kind of on the hot seat. They got all that talent at Texas A&M, but they haven't been able to win anything. So. Yeah, they haven't. So we'll see how it plays out this year. But a lot of people are picking LSU to win the West, not Alabama. So 
fine bombs on Alabama's bandwagon. So it'll be interesting to see how Nick Saban talks tomorrow. He's at 10 a.m. tomorrow. But today the big highlight is Georgia's coach, Kirby Smart, talking about the 3 P, talking about the quarterback situation, all that taking place today out in Nashville, Tennessee. And I saw where since Oklahoma and Texas are coming in the SEC next year, SEC Media Day next year is going to be in Dallas, Texas. In Dallas, huh? All right. It's going to be weird, you know, after having the Western Eastern divisions for all these years, uh, you know, from a long time we didn't have it, of course, and then we've had it now for the last heaven knows how many years, not to have it next year. So, from what you're saying, it's going to be the two top Top teams. Top two teams, top ranked teams. It seems like you'd have a lot of ties in there. That's what I'm saying. So, the question is, what are the tiebreakers? Yeah. Uh, What are the tiebreakers on that? I don't like the fact they're not having conferences. I mean, I like the East and the West. I mean, I hate that they break that tradition, but. That's the story that they're not going to have East and West. It's all going to be one conference, and the top two teams are going to play for the championship. Good news is the championship game is still going to stay in Atlanta until they made some contract deal. They got it till after, I think they extended several years. So Mercedes Benz still the host of the SEC championship game, but I'm sure that'll change mm-hmm. down the road. But. It's always about money. Whoever's who's got the most money. That's right. It's always about the money, man, honey. We always say that. Yeah. But football is right, right around the corner. I said college football less than two months away. It's looking at Georgia Tech and Georgia Southern and Georgia schedule, so it should be fun. I said we've got Georgia Tech and Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern opens up against the Citadel. Okay. So, I said they're going to have a better season. I saw Ted, Todd Hilton in his second year should – Make some waves in the Sun Belt Conference, so we'll see how it plays out. Ready for football. In fact, this Friday is two weeks away from Wayne County scrimmage. August two 4th. weeks away from this Friday. Two weeks from, from this scrimmage. Friday, and then four weeks away from the first regular yeah. season game. We've got the touchdown club people coming in Friday to talk about the barbecue kickoff, and I said practices are underway, and it'll be here before you know it. Yeah. We've got two sets of guests coming in tomorrow, and then we got uh, Congressman Betty Carter as a guest on the show on Thursday, and then on Friday we have the Touchdown Club coming in. So we're packed with guests for the next for the rest of the week, and we look forward to having all those folks on. I was just looking over an article here. It says that Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence might be on their way to something big. It's kind of an NFL preview where they preview the different teams, and you know, winning the division last year, and of course losing the Kansas City like they did, but. Um, you know, there's a lot of folks out there who, you know, talking positive things about the, the Jaguars. They got that franchise quarterback. Yeah, he can play. Yeah. He's just getting better and better. But they're putting some pieces around him. So good that they signed him from the tight end to a long term contract. So should be a fun year down in Jacksonville. Okay. And what do you look out of the Falcons this year? What's you know, they know they had that was good, that running, you know, that running game. You know, the question is, can the quarterback progress? You know, so see how that goes. Okay. All right. I'm more worried about my Steelers than I am the Falcons. And, you know, I'm a Steelers know, but, you fan. know, we don't carry the Steelers. We carry the Falcons here on WIFO, I'm, I'm, I'm Georgia's a, team. I'm not a Falcon fan. All right, well. I'm not. Just I'm because not. you don't like it, you, you have to – you have to, to talk to your fan base out there, Bob, yeah. to your listeners. And, you know, we're in Falcon country here. You're not in, we're not in Steeler country. We're in Falcon yeah. country. Yeah. When I see Kenny Bryant and Mike Phillips, I'll ask them. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't checked, I haven't checked on the Falcons. So I'm worried about the Steelers. <laughs> Steelers are going to have a big year. Kenny Pickett's year two. Oh, boy. Well, here we go. <laughs> they're going to be rolling. You think so? Huh? Super Bowl bound. Oh man, I just love the way you go into the optim. But you have to. Optimist. You, know, you can't go into the season saying, I'm "Oh optimistic. well, they may make it or not." If you got a team, you got to pull for them. It's like you know, I feel it's going to be the Falcons and Jaguars in the Super Bowl this year. I mean, that's what I pull for. A former George graduate, George Pickens, going to have a great year this year. Okay. Keep that name in mind. It'll be it'll be a highlight reel this year in NFL. Who's that again? George Pickens. George Pickens. And what position does he play? Wide receiver. Wide receiver. Got him out of Georgia last year. He had his rookie year last year, made a big impact. He's gonna have a stellar year this year. Okay. Who's gonna be throwing to him? Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett. Is, yeah. is Pickett is pick is is It's throwing the Pickens. Pickens. <laughs> That's right. 
Pick it the pickings. Pick it the pickings. That's right. It's going to be a great combination. I'm telling you, it's going to be a highlight reel. You're going to see them every Sunday. Oh, God. I'm going to say, what a catch. What a catch. What a catch. Just, One handed behind his back exactly. over the goal line. I'm telling you. He can do it. He's a very talented athlete. Yeah, also, second year there. I was for so Pittsburgh, happy when right? we got him. Yeah. 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 Now we got is now we it picking the pickings or it's picket. Picket. Pickett is the quarterback. Pickett, Kenny Pickett. Is, is the Pickens. George Pickett Pickens. The Pickens. Pickens is the receiver. All right. So yeah. Pickett, the quarterback, to Pickens, the receiver, exactly. formerly of Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Got to remember that combination yeah. this if year. You're, if you got it, for if, the Steelers. if you haven't had your fantasy draft, you better get that combination. <laughs> <laughs> Big points. Oh boy, uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, football just you know. Next month, it'll be here, you know, with the uh, high school and college. Um, you know, pro will be just in preseason, which don't mean diddly squat. They won't start to like the second week in September with their regular season games. But um, football right here upon us. Got, you know, the, the camps beginning this week for the rookies there at the Falcons and other, other teams. And the um, uh, regular players the, 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 the will show up next week and – Get all prepared for football. Those two running backs could not get their long-term deal. The Giants have not signed. Mark Lee, and the, uh, the other running back, Pollard, hasn't got it. You know, so, like I said, the game's changed. You know, Running backs just aren't Well, they as think they're interchangeable they these right. days. You don't exactly. need that one hoss. You can have a team of, of – of, you can have you know, three or four backs back there, maybe three of them or something like that, and just interchange them out so you don't have to pay one of them a, a Derrick Henry type of uh, salary. It's just wide open offense. They're throwing the ball. They don't rely on it running back. Well, you got to have a running game, but they don't think they have to have that dominating running back like you used to. You can, you can slip them in there. They they've got to be able to run, block, you know, run, catch, uh, you know, quick passes and stuff like that. Got to be very versatile to be a, a back these days. Don't they forget about it. when the weather gets bad and it's cold and windy and all that? You got to have that grind. Yeah, you got to have the grind. You got to have a running game. Uh, but they're just not. They're just not paying running backs the money they used to. Nope, not now. they used to because they don't depend upon them. They figure they can, you know, by committee. Pay them by committee. It's all about the quarterback. Got to have that franchise quarterback. Yep. Yes, you uh, did. Jacksonville got theirs, and Trevor Lawrence. Pittsburgh's got theirs, and Kenny Pickett. So that's what you got to have. Kansas City's got Patrick Mahomes. That's that's who wins. You know, NFL is all about quarterback. Got to have that marquee quarterback to win. Don't yeah. have him, you don't win. I know. It shows you how difficult it is to be just a, a premier quarterback in the NFL. You got thousands and thousands up there in college. You know, and you got ones at the top level, like a Georgia, Alabama, State, Michigan, USC, and all that kind of stuff. And then just trying to narrow it down. You can have a college quarterback that just lit it up in college, but can't do squat in the pros for some reason, even though they're playing in, you know, in, in conferences like the SEC or the Big Ten or the Pac 10 or Big 12 and all the ones out there. You think you're playing against that type of competition that you'd be able to do well in. In the pros, because most of the um, most of the college teams have wide open offenses, but somehow, so a lot of these quarterbacks just cannot make that transition from college to pro. Yeah, must see TV is going to be hard knocks. They picked the New York Jets, and Jets didn't want it. Aaron Rodgers is all upset. I know they didn't want. I, can they? I guess they can force it upon because the Jets said we don't want this here. Aaron Rodgers says we don't want this here. It's going to be fun. They said they got a new. They got an agreement there in Rogers. They'll do all his interviews in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Incense burning. Yeah. You know, just, <laughs> you know, he had that place where he went. Uh, uh, but it's going to be fun. That'll be must see TV. Yes, sir. New York Jets, Aaron Rogers. Yes, sir. <laughs> Been on the night goggles. <laughs> where is he? We can hear him. <laughs> I was listening to AM 1370 last night. Those guys are. They're all on Aaron Rodgers. They got the Jets winning the division and everything. They're just, oh, they they're, do, they're, huh? They, they, they're all on Aaron Rodgers. They got the hard knocks there, huh? Hard knocks. On a team that's, that's supposed that's a, to do some winning. That's a good job. Last time they had the Jets, had, you know, that was Rex Ryan's last year as head coach, and they made it to the playoffs that year. They so did, because usually when hard yeah. knocks comes in, that team doesn't have a good year that year. Yeah. 
I compare them to the NFL can force it upon them because I everything right. I heard leading up to it, they didn't want it. Aaron didn't want it. Team didn't want it. Nobody wants it. I mean, nobody wants cameras twenty four seven around there. But you yeah. know, but like I said, it's all about the money, honey. So the Jets made a deal with Hard Knocks, and they're the team that they're going to cover. So write us a big enough check, and you can come in with our locker room with your with but your I'm cameras. Sure Aaron, Aaron Rodgers be entertaining. I mean, that'll, that's going to be fun stuff to watch. <laughs> That's going to be must-see TV. <laughs> I reckon so. What is that air on? Is it NFL Network or what? Uh, HBO. HBO. Yeah, HBO. I think is... it's HBO. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be able to watch it. I'll just see highlights of it, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes they re-air it on the NFL Network. You've got NFL Network. No, I told you. I've got an antenna outside. I pick up over the air. I still don't have SAV, so I don't know what's going on. SAV right still not there? Still They're not still there. negotiating? They're not, they don't even have it. Now it's just a blank screen. They used to have that announcement that they're working out. Yeah. You know, be patient. Now there's nothing. It's just a blank screen. So oh, geez. Maybe they're not coming back at all. So. Well, they'll come back. I mean, this has happened tons of times for the past God knows how many years. And like I said, it's about the money. How much, you know, SAV wants a certain amount of money from the, what is it, DirecTV or Dish? DirecTV. DirecTV. They want X amount of money from DirecTV to be able to uh, carry the SAV program, the so that's scored how much DirecTV is willing to fork out to SAV. So that's how it their... works. SAV has to pay them, or they no, get no, money no, no. It's the SAV DirecTV Direct is using their product to sell uh, subscriptions. So okay? DirecTV pays them. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. DirecTV. I mean, DirecTV, Dish Network, Comcast, all that. They pay these. I thought it was the other way around. I thought they'd oh, pay. No, away. you're gonna. No, yeah, no, no, no. You know, if all you know, if you got Direct TV, you're using all these sources out there to be able to sell subscriptions, okay? And so you pay X amount of bucks to each one of these um, networks or cable shows or whatever it may be these days, and um, you fork that out, and then you have a good enough product there that you sell subscriptions to. So they just can't come to terms. Right now, it's aggravating. They better get it settled by football season. I mean, NBC. Oh, that, yeah. yeah that's, they, that's the Notre Dame network right there. I won't even get to watch Notre Dame. Poor thing. That'll be bad. <laughs> you poor thing. Won't be able to stop watch them gold helmets. That's right. Won't be able to watch the golden dumbers. <laughs> I got a DVR then. They are some gold helmets, aren't they? I mean, those things shine. I don't know. I mean, somebody, somebody in that locker room every single week, man, they, too, they put a buff to them. I need to give them my shoes. Well, if you, you see know? the movie Rudy, they show how they do that. They go in there and they paint them and they do I mean, they, yeah, they, they, going, they buff them. Those things are shiny. It's yeah. sorry, man. You could, you could. The golden domers. You could brush your teeth looking at them, man. It's just, they're, go, they're shiny. Go Irish. Um. <laughs> uh, Boy, did you hear yesterday uh, that uh, over the weekend, Miranda Lambert was doing a uh, concert and, you know, there was several girls, the ladies down in front, not paying her too much mind at the time. They were taking selfies, you know, they so they, you know, they weren't looking up at her. They were had their phones and they were taking selfies as individuals and groups and stuff like that. And she just Stopped her concert. She says, I won't stop right here for a second. I'm sorry, she told the audience. These girls are wor worried about their selfie and not listening to the song. Okay. What, what does she care? They paid their ticket. <laughs> I know. It, she says, uh, Miranda Lambert said, it's pissing me off a little bit. Uh, sorry, I don't like it at all. We're here to hear some country music tonight, and I'm singing some country I'm singing some country, uh, country music. And... Uh, the thing about it is, is that's just the way people are. I and see Miranda's upset right now, but I remember back in 2011, she sang at um, in Savannah at the Civic Center there. You know, way back in in 2011. Okay, and right then, smartphones were just starting to come out. Okay, now I didn't have one. A lot of folks I knew didn't have one, but there was a few people around me that had them. Just a just a small handful okay uh, maybe three in the whole area that i could see and and i looked at the screens you could see their screens and i think oh yeah they're they're recording you know miranda so i got a good close look at the screens no they weren't recording miranda they were looking at stuff on the uh, on the phone from from the internet on stuff they weren't paying miranda no mind at all they were 
fixed on their phone. You know, for a lot of folks out there, the, the phones are like a drug. You know, they got to have it. They got to look at it. They got to see it. It's the first thing they look at when they get up in the morning. First, last thing they look at when they go to bed at night. They're constantly checking it during the day. I mean, the, the amount of times that people check their phones these days really surprised the living daylights out of me the other day because I, I don't do that. But so many people do it. But you know, these people just have to understand that these concerts, these uh, artists, that people are going to be taking selfies. I mean, it's they're, you know, they're, they're going to be doing it. They're going to be looking at their phone. They're going to be doing that. And just don't worry about them. Be concerned about the folks who are actually looking at you and enjoying your music, not the ones that are ignoring you, taking selfies or looking at stuff on their phone. I just can't believe she's worried about it. Well, she was. <laughs> she's, just, uh, and she's being kind of... They paid their money to do what they want to do. Well, yeah, yeah, here. yeah. The, and and then she's being kind of people on uh, social media kind of, you know, yeah. getting on her case about it, you know, basically saying what you're doing is, you know, yeah. they can do what they want to do. They pay their money. They're in there. If they want to take selfies. It's their business, you know. They can still hear her, you know. It's just that, you know. And so um, people love taking selfies. A lot of folks do. I, I don't what if football, you ever, you, what if football players did that? I mean, there's a bunch of people football game not watching a football game. It's Patrick Mahomes going to say, "Stop, time out! You're not watching a football that's game." That's right. <laughs> I'm not yeah. going. I'm not going to play. <laughs> and what's so interesting is he's like you go down to the to, to uh, Jacksonville and they got those huge two screens right. on each side. You got the live play by play in front of you down there. You're looking at live football players and where are they half the eyes look. They're looking up at the screens, not at the players down on the field. You might as well just stay home and watch it on the big screen TV at home. <laughs> but uh, it's taking selfies. I mean, I know people out there that take selfies every day. We got one at the station. I won't mention, mention that person's name, uh, but there's people who take selfies every day. You know, I know what I look like, so I don't have to take selfies every day. Do you ever take selfies? Not really. Not really. I mean, uh, no. If I if I take a selfie, it's because something's in the background that I want to have. Not. I mean, and I rare. I don't even have one on my new phone that I've had now for three months. I got a face for radio. I don't take selfies. Yeah, and <laughs> and then you had a person taking a selfie yesterday at the Tour de France. What was the reaction of the people once you stopped the concert? I mean, did they get upset? Did they, they get upset? I mean, did they stop taking selfies? I mean, what what does she care? I don't know I don't why understand. she. I guess I mean, she's just up there doing it, and they're not paying attention to her. But she just has to understand that's today's society. People well, I'm are. What does she care? They paid their money to get in there. I said I paid my money. I can do what I want to do. Mm. I know people to go to football games. They're watching football game. Fans on TikTok says uh, Miranda didn't even talk to our Vegas audience between songs. Hardly wrote one TikTok user. Always in a in, says Miranda's always in a mood. Fans can how. Can, can enjoy however they want, they paid, just like you did. They paid, they can do whatever they want That's to do. Right. Maybe she's if she, bad if she looked carefully out there, you know, because most of the time you can, you can see as the artist is the people right around the stage because you got those lights and everything like that. But if she looked at that, you're going to have half the people out there on the phones. They're not... They're not really actually. Uh, that's just the way people are. They're, it's, it's like a drug to a lot of folks. I mean, they say that if you take a, a, a smartphone away from young folks these days, teenagers in their twenties and even some thirties, they start getting nervous. They start getting itchy. You know, they they can't go. You know, Where's my phone? They're they're looking for it. You know, they start having withdrawals. You know, they start having withdrawals from the smartphone. People, you know, are just hooked to it. And then yesterday in the Tour de France, you had a guy taking a selfie. And he kind of stepped out in the um, the road a little bit, hit the handlebars of, of oh, one of the riders, and had a major crash of all the different competitors behind him because a guy was taking a selfie, trying to get a selfie out there in the road. It made a major crash in the in Tour de France. Could have changed the outcome of the Tour de France because he had to take a selfie. Oh, well. Yeah. What so, is this fascination with folks wanting so to take what's selfies? What's the solution? Ban selfies for the rest of the year. So. <laughs> I just can't understand why she got so upset about it. It's just I, it tickles me. Well, they just say that I I have no idea, but she just got upset about it, and you know she just I guess you're up there, you're performing, you're singing, you're you know you're you're trying to entertain, and you got people more interested in taking pictures of themselves than paying attention to you. But that's just the way things are these days. You, you, people are infatuated in love and hooked on 
their 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 cell phones. Many of them like taking selfies and and stuff like that. So, you know, she just needs to. You know, like I said, if they brought the lights up suddenly like that and she looked at everybody out there, she'd probably see half the people out there got their phones on doing something with them. They're they're texting this person. They're they're on Facebook with this person. They're looking at this, looking at that. They, you know, people's attention spans these days are like goldfish. You know, it's like. You know, like it goes boom, bam, 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 boom, bam, you know, from, from one from one thing to another. Uh, but um, And then, of course, you've heard these tragic stories about people taking selfies that have fallen off cliffs, stepped out in front of traffic, you know, um, had one guy taking a selfie and stepped on a snake. I mean, just, just different things over and over again because they're more interested in taking the pictures of themselves than trying to watch what's around them. But Bob, you and I are not like that. No, I don't have <laughs> but, that problem. But I, no, but there's a lot of folks are, yeah. And um, but uh, it, it's interesting reading articles these days about people's just being hooked on their smartphone. It's just it, you know they, you know there's there's saying a lot of folks out there would give up their spouse before they'd give up their cell phone. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. But just the way it is these days. You know, one of these days, maybe you ought to get your t- smartphone and put that little SIM card into your brain there, and, and then you won't have to worry about holding the phone. You can just do it all through your thoughts and your brain. What's going to happen that day, Bob, when you're able to put computer chips in people's brains? I mean, you can get access to all the information in the world. Do you have to go to school then? Yeah. <laughs> the future is, um, is uh, very interesting when it comes to this AI stuff. But Bob, we don't have to worry about that. We've already passed all that generation. But the ones now, and, and they're you know, and they're the young ones, and they're you know, you know in school and teens and stuff like that. What are things? What are things going to be like for them when they become adults and and and, and they get in their forties and fifties and sixties? How are things going to be? Because you know things just speed up. The technology gets faster and faster and faster and faster. I mean, you can <clears> consider a, over a little over a hundred years ago. Most people were, let's see, what's this, 2023? A little over 100 years ago, most people were still living in, in the country on farms. Most of them were still on horses and buggies. You know, uh, you didn't have, you know, you, you, telephones were just coming in, but most people didn't have them. Most people didn't have electricity. A little over 100 years ago. And look where we are now, just about 125 years later. Absolutely amazing with the technology that keeps getting faster and faster. Well, you're all Atlanta Braves out today. You got your Atlanta Braves T-shirt on, Atlanta Braves cap. Was that just the nearest thing to you when you woke up this morning? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's next on top, you know. This, this was the T-shirt on top. So. <laughs> it's the T-shirt on top. <laughs> Bob stack of morning T-shirts. That's it. <laughs> all right, this is the one for the day. I see it. All right, let's uh, let's talk about the two meetings that are going on today. Here in Jessup, Wayne uh, County. School board meets today at 6, and the city meets tonight at 7. So, we'll be at both of those. So, school board agenda is kind of short, so should be able to get to the city meeting by 7. So, not much on uh, the school calendars is the main thing on the. They got the calendars for the next two years to be approved tonight by the board. They discussed those. Like I said, they sought input from teachers, and everybody had a chance to give their input. So, They've come up with the schedules that are going to be approved for the next two years, 2024, 2025. So all that on the agenda. So that's today. the school board agenda. 6 p.m., Judy Beaver will be on hand with that special program. They do that student apprentice program that's nice to have where students go off campus and go do jobs and things like that. But the people that completed that program will be recognized tonight. They got the update on the capital outlay projects. Could get an update on ROTC building and the um, Ag building, and Dr. Harrison, again, just the, the school calendars for the years 2024, 2025, and 2025, 2026, and the personnel handbooks are on the agenda as well. So okay. that's the school board agenda. The city meeting. Jessup you know, city meeting. Interesting. I said they've got an executive session to discuss personnel. That will be interesting. Also on the agenda, discussion on the recreational trails grant program, discussion about the South Palm Street subdivision plat, which has been – Something that they've gone back and forth on. We'll see how that goes. Interim Police Chief Chris Hamilton on the agenda to request the purchase of four new Dodge Chargers for the police department. 
in the June 2023 financial report on the agenda. So, okay. Along with the commissioners, I was mayor. Hopefully, get an update on where the District 5 commissioner seat is. Like right, said, maybe an update on that, too. Uh, cool. Talking to the governor's office, like I said, the governor's still hands off right now. I don't think they want to get involved. So, we'll see if they got a different opinion. I'm sure they've been in contact with the governor's office this week. So, okay. But I don't, just me personally, I'm still, if I'm in Vegas betting, it's going to November. Okay. Well, we'll have a full report on the Jessup City Council meeting and the Wayne County School Board meeting on our local news tomorrow morning at 7.15. Well, Bob, do your best to try to stay cool today. I'll do my best. I'll be watching SEC Media Days. <laughs> Kirby at 11.30. Uh, 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 Kirby at 11.30, huh? Uh, All right, wait. Bob. Have a great day. World famous Butch and Bob show here on WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup brought to you by O'Quinn Associates, Murphy Builder Supply, Vans Barbecue, and First Southern Bank.